This makes me feel like I'm back in Cuba with my people. Yeah, your peeps. My peeps. And we are back. Here I am with Captain Ray Rocher uh, with r, r Tackle. I'm Fly from Fly Zone Fishing. We got the kite up. We're getting ready to put our line into the clip. Explain to us how you have your kite line set up. Typically, we use in, in anything less than about 20 knots of wind, we're using braid line, 80 pound braid. We prefer to use a floss mark mainly because it's 100% line strength going through it. We just use various thicknesses of dental floss. So let's take a look at that. Just yep. Whoa, two short guys. So basically here's your mark. This is what stops the clip, that little fat part right there. And also this length helps keep it jammed down. The way these clips are made, uh, this is an M2 clip that we make real lightweight, even put a synthetic screw on it. Um, the difference between this clip and the one that we fish on our rigger is this one you actually put the ring in, but we'll get there in a minute. Basically, both uh, all of our clips are made with a taper on both sides. So whether it's jumping over this or that, you know, any direction it's going, it funnels into that hole. And they all have four different size holes from 1 16th, 1 8th, 3 16th, and quarter. So all of our clips are the same. The big clips, the little clips can use the same kite line. And that is so uh, your first kite clip on the kite has the smallest hole. Yep. And then the next size, bigger, bigger, bigger and just bigger. keep staging. And then that way you can stage them out. Yeah. This one is how far away from the kite? The kite? About a hundred feet. And then in between, and in between each other one, eighty to ninety feet. And if that, if you were gonna go ahead and put it together yourself, if not, you we got, make them. You guys yeah. do make them, and you store yeah. them here on a yo-yo where the marks are already on there. Yep. Uh, you can just buy it and reel it onto your own reel. Right. And okay. this second mark is so that when you do get bit, sometimes, you know, the line will snap, the, the clip sometimes will come off your mark. Well, this helps catch it so that on a windy day, when you get up around that 15 knots and better, this clip doesn't go all the way to the kite, which we have had happen, which is why we put that second mark. Just not to be confused, they're two, two different marks, different diameters. And we have four of these on this line. You don't have to fish four clips, but we have it for that situation where maybe you graduate to that point. Fish as many clips and as many baits as you can comfortably fish for the weather and your experience level. So let's go ahead and let's clip okay. one in there. All Just, right. Uh... Yeah, give me that cord. One thing I like to do is I like to have just this clip on this side of the ring. We use this ring as kind of a pulley. We put the other clips down here so they don't get carried out. Perfect. Now the ring, this is a little technical here. You have to visualize the way this ring goes into the jaw. When the kite goes out, you see the angle from your rod tip? That's the same pulley system that you want like you have, we talked about on the outriggers. Now what most people do when they just start out is it feels more natural to go like this. But look what happens when the kite goes out. Now you're binding that line. So this is the one part that you really need to slow down, take a second and think about it. And there's, you know, you can do it a variety of ways. The cork goes on the outside of the ring. You know, there's little things you can get in your head. But the bottom line is, as that ring leaves the boat, you need to see that angle of line cleanly passing over that. Therefore, no resistance. So go ahead and fire that bait up. Coming out. All right, and we are going out on one. And that's our first bait on this kite. Thanks for joining us here in the Fly Zone.